50. Yeah. It's 50 shades of life. Yeah. Let's talk about your type. Are your pockets feeling light? Does your man treat you right? Is your sex game lame? Are you searching for some fame? And yeah. hey, your cuz, let's talk about it. Sex health, music wealth, true to self. I knew myself. Boo, you better not lose yourself. But let me mind my own black business. Running up these dishes, fresher than them dishes. Tell your grant your wishes. I'm a tarot reading witness. Yeah. What's up, everybody, and welcome to 50 Shades of Life. Here we are. I'm your girl, Raquel Nicole, and here is my dope cousin. Black Magnolia Talia. What's up, everybody, for our special edition, Valentine's Day. Yes. Yes. What's up? Thank you for joining us. Amen. Yes. Welcome, welcome. <laughs> this is a different episode. Like Talia said, this is a very special episode it is wednesday february 14th valentine's day the day of love <laughs> yes yes oh my goodness <laughs> so tell you tell us what we talk about today what's happening so i thought it would be cool to bring on couples and especially to help people when they are falling in love and wanting to get married what does it take to sustain a relationship? What does it take to get married? Now I'm a single person, so I won't be, I'll be asking the questions and I'm asking all the lovely married people the questions of what is love? What does it feel like to be in love? And just over the many years, what does it take to sustain a relationship? And that is what I like to talk about most is love, relationships, family. That's my thing. So that's yeah. what we're talking about today. Yes. So we actually have six couples and the ones that you see right behind Talia have been married the longest out of all six couples. So shout out to the longevity of the, the marriage. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, uh, uh. we are going to, Talia, I'm going to let you introduce your, your folks over there. Okay. All right. So we have Selma here, and she is my mother. And then we have my father. This is Charles. And this is the lovely couple. How long have you guys been married? 53 years. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> and so I figured they would have lots of wisdom hey. and advice yes. <laughs> to tell us tonight. Yeah. I don't know who I'm... they talking about. <laughs> 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 that's awesome so we we kind of broke it down into what is it three different sections um mm -hmm. and we kind of want to talk about like your early years right mm -hmm. um when you guys first got married I know it was a long time ago but I'm pretty sure you still remember how things were you know when you first got married but when did you realize like that Auntie Selma was like the one well we met in high school for sure and I, I looked at her mm -hmm. and I said, that's a pretty skinny girl there. <laughs> oh my goodness. A pretty skinny girl. <laughs> but she was very good looking. Oh. Mm -hmm. So I uh, talked to her for a while. And as time passed, we talked more and more. Our biggest obstacle in, in our starting our relationship was her father. <laughs> of course. <laughs> yeah, he set all the standards. Yeah. He said, when I could see her, which was two days a week, oh, wow. when I could call her, yeah, when I could call her, which was on certain days, like I think Tuesdays and Thursdays. Mm. And if I had to go see her, I had to put on a coat and a tie. Okay. Yes. <laughs> yes. I got a new standard to add in my house. <laughs> <laughs> what? So, it, it was uh, kind of trying in the beginning. Yeah. But uh, if you want to see somebody and the chemistry is there, you do what you have to do. Oh, and did y'all hear I that? Did, did y'all hear that? Facts. Oh, my bad. Yes, my, bad so, my bad. My bad. We talking about No, love, exactly. Right? But that's exactly right. Something for you to to remember is if someone is not doing those types of things, then maybe they're not, they don't really think you're the one. If they're not going the distance, yes. you know, doing right. going the extra mile, then maybe they don't think you're the one. 
Yeah, I went about 20 miles, though. <laughs> <laughs> and this is, y'all, we talking about 50 years ago from now, okay? Yeah. So no cell phones, you know, this was a long time ago, okay? I don't want to, like, age y'all to forever, but this is a long time. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I need them to understand the fact that they have been married 53 years. So this was before technology. I'm being dead serious. So yeah, people yeah. complain right now. And I'm like, you talking about somebody who had to walk to go see this person who had to wait, you know, it's not like you had pagers even, you know, to say, yeah. hey, I'm gonna call you in 10 minutes, you know, and again, you had the presence of her father and he was like, okay, those are his standards. He respected it, obviously. Mm -hmm. And it is what it is, you know? Yep. So right. I love it. I so y'all met it. in high school, what, ninth grade, 10th grade? Like when? 10th grade, I was 15. Wow. Mm. That's dope. That's so awesome. you know, we tried hard, uh, you know, when you want to see someone and you have a few obstacles, you kind of overcome them. There were many times that she left her umbrella at school and I had to bring it to her. <laughs> okay. Oh, that's fine. Was, <laughs> <laughs> yep. So those that's are some cool. of the things. Oh, so you were doing a little sneaky stuff. <laughs> oh, okay. So at what <laughs> point did what we call them Grampy? So at what point did Grampy, a.k.a., you know, my auntie's daddy, um, kind of back off a little bit? Or did he maintain those standards until you guys got married? Like how many years or months or how long was it before he kind of softened up a little bit and allowed you to participate in seeing her more? I guess he saw the, got to the point he saw I wasn't going to quit. <laughs> so he really had no choice in a sense because she was uh, just as in interested in me as I was in her. Oh, and I guess he finally recognized that and that I was a, a very good fellow. And he <laughs> relented and he allowed me to uh, talk with her more. Mm. Uh, yeah. And also when my mom told him, if you don't let go with these girls, she's going to start meeting him around the street on Spring Street. Mm. So you need to let up a little bit because this is something natural. And that's, that came from my mother all those years wow. ago. Mm. Wow. So she even noticed it. That's good. Now, Auntie yeah. Selma, what was it about Uncle Mickey that you actually liked to where it attracted you to him? He was always very respectful. And and he dressed really nicely. So as, and, and, you know, I could tell that he was interested in other things besides uh, school. He in, he liked sports, and I was into watching him play ball because he was a very good basketball player. So I enjoyed seeing Because, you know, I was never around mm -hmm. guys that did anything like that. Dad didn't allow us to do a whole lot of things. So yeah. uh, it was always... The things that he talked about, he, it was very interesting to talk to him all the time because he was always a different subject. So that's good. He, he was always interesting to talk to. Okay, so when did you realize that you said, you know what, I want to marry this person. This is my person. I think, um, you know, for a long time, I always wanted to marry him. But it really got to the point when he was about to go to Vietnam. And I, you know, I didn't want anything to happen to him. And so I just thought it would be a good thing for us to at least get engaged before we left. And so he asked me to marry him before. Uh -huh. Emotional about the bus, I'm crying. <laughs> so you were saying you went to be, uh, when you went to at least be engaged when you went to Vietnam? Yes. Okay, go ahead. Okay, so uh, just before he got ready to go to Vietnam, you know, we were really serious about each other for a, a couple of years, you know, very serious. So mm -hmm. when he got ready to go to Vietnam, I started thinking about, you know, this may be my last time to see him. And so that's when he asked me to marry him. That's cool. But you guys definitely had that conversation. I mean, were you in college? Were you like, where, how old were you? Yeah, throughout, throughout college. Okay. We dated each other uh, through college. He finished school, and as soon as he finished uh, college, 
it, he got the call. Wow. They beat him. <laughs> Dang. They were like, yeah, we're going to go uh, ahead and wait till he gets done, and then we're going to tell him, come on, the Vietnam War. Yeah. So we had had our relationship through high school and through college, and it lasted. And uh, you kind of know then that that's the person you want to be with. It's not just the chemistry that you have in the beginning of a relationship. Mm -hmm. It was transpires during the relationship. So we enjoyed being in each other's company, and we had a lot to talk about. Mm -hmm. And we kind of just merged. So at that point, I kind of knew that uh, I wanted her to be my wife, mm -hmm. and I begged her to be my wife, you know. <laughs> you begged? <laughs> and Did you have to ask Grandpa? Yeah, we asked Grandpa. Mm -hmm. uh, I remember a long time ago in our relationship when I was still in high school, and her dad had told us something that was pretty interesting. Do you remember? Yes. What did he tell you? Yeah. Other fish in the sea. Mm. Get out That's of there. That's what he told him. <laughs> he said, get out of there. Get out of there. That's right. Yeah. He told me there were other fish in the sea. No, oh, so he, he wanted somebody else for, for the <laughs> He said, no, go he just the water. No, he just probably thought I was a little too fast for her. Oh. Oh. Okay. That's another yeah. podcast. <laughs> <laughs> that's a whole other episode <laughs> what is it what would you say from your experience in relationships mm, that's a red flag I'm not really sure if that's something that I would I would reconsider I would think about it a little more what would be something that would stick out for you honesty mm. so a uh, person to me it has you have to have integrity mm -hmm. and you have to be able to see that that person is a real person it's not about self. It, it's, it's always about how you feel about the other person as well as yourself. Mm -hmm. That's that's what I see. And I would tell anybody to always watch what character this person has. Mm -hmm. And and like I say, you have to have integrity. And, and then you, the honesty is the most, you know, honest. be honest and trusting in a person. Mm -hmm. You have to be able to trust a person. Mm -hmm. Is, is the way I feel about anybody's relationship. If you can't trust the person, how in the world will you ever be able to do anything? Yeah. yeah. Go forward. So it. a liar is going to be your red <laughs> <laughs> She made me fit everywhere. <laughs> okay, what about you, Dan? Well, <clears throat> the first thing in any relationship to me is, is the chemistry mm -hmm. that yeah. two people have. The second thing is, in, in, is it uh, compatible? Mm -hmm. Do you enjoy being with that person? Do you have enough uh, conversation? Not conversation that you make up, but natural conversation. Mm -hmm. And I think we did that. And uh, also, we have to show where we have kind of like like minds. Yeah. We like some of the, like, the same things, and we enjoy it doing some of the same things. Mm -hmm. That's important because that's mm -hmm. going to carry over into your relationship. I 100% agree. Yeah. So, like you couldn't have one person that likes to be a party animal and then the other person is like, well, I'm going to be a homebody and I and I don't want to save any money and I just want to be on the go, go, go. You mean like that? Mm -hmm. Well, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. Possibly, yeah. Because uh, it's never going to work. Yeah. yeah. You know, uh, well, it's never going to work. So when you guys got married, was it after you came back from Vietnam or or how soon was it? After I came back from Vietnam. Gotcha. Uh, but just like she said, I was the main thing I was worried about. You go over there, you're in a war situation, you never know what's going to happen. Yeah. And uh, I would hate to have married her at that time. And then I got killed or something. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So it just left not a gap in the relationship, but the possibility that this may may have happened and it would have been uh, really devastating to her. It would have probably been anyway, but at least she would have had a uh, choice, you know, right after the relationship if mm -hmm. that had happened. Yeah. And that's she that's, could have moved on in, in essence. Yeah. 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 And I think that is um selfless, obviously. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Because some people think polar opposite. 
where they were like, no, nah, I'm going to go ahead, whether something happened to me or not, I don't want to be with nobody else, and da -da -da, you know what I'm saying? And me go ahead and lock her down now. Exactly. You know, that type of thing. So I think that even shows even more love, you know, that obviously he had even back then. So in your early marriage, and I know, you know how people say, you know, if you hit three years, if you hit seven years and five years or whatever, then, oh, you can make it. So what were some of the early adjustments, especially you guys are probably were in a very different situation because you're coming back from a war. So what kind of adjustments did you guys have to make in your earlier marriage, like maybe in your first five years of your marriage? Well, you know, we knew each other as friends first. Mm -hmm. And so as years went by, we knew a lot about each other. So it wasn't a whole lot of changes. You know, it's a change when you're living with somebody because we, we never lived with each other. Mm -hmm. So there were things that I was not used to living with a man. <laughs> uh, and, and I'm sure he's not used to that either because we both live with our parents. So it really was a, a the difference. My main thing, and I say this all the time, he was in the military still. So he moved, he called for me to come January. We got married in December. He called for me to come in January and he had the house set up and the apartment set up and everything. So when it was time for us to go shopping, he gave me money. And I just, I said, God, that feels so weird for a man to give me money because that never happened to me before. So wow. that was a big adjustment and adjustment, you know, learning what he liked to eat, the things that he liked, you know, eating and Mm -hmm. It was many things that you have to get adjusted to when you not you haven't lived with your, each other before. So, wow. what about you? Uh, well, <clears throat> something funny. When I came back from Vietnam, they sent a letter home to your parents, right? Mm -hmm. And in the letter, they say you may have some strange behaviors. <laughs> oh my yeah. you know, strange behaviors. You know, PTSD Boy. or something. You know? Yeah, that's why I said that. Yep. <laughs> So I think one incident, uh, I was back at the house and I was in my room and I was striking a match. So I think my mother called you, right? Yeah, she called. <laughs> Tell me what she told you. She says, he's acting kind of strange. I say, strange how? She said, he's sitting in between, they had twin beds in the, in the room where he was. Mm -hmm. And he's sitting between the bed and he's just striking the match and looking at it till it gets close to his fingers. I said, what? So she said, when you get a chance, just just watch him the next time. And I'm like, oh my God, what does that mean? So what were you doing? I really don't really remember that too much. You know, you know how you know how they blow things out of proportion, you know what I'm saying? And, and that's what that was. I, and I guess the level kind of set that up, you know, because a lot of guys yes. came back from Vietnam and they were kind of yep. messed up, you know. Yep. Uh, but I wasn't. It's just a uh, time I went through uh, getting out of the army and uh, coming back to, uh, as we call it, Vietnam, coming back to the world. Yeah. So it's it's a it's an adjustment you have to make. Yeah. And, uh, I had to make it. Then. Wow. That's all. Well, at least you was alert because some parents would have been like, "Look at him in there," and kept on walking. <laughs> 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 Like, if it was my yeah. son, I'd be like, I don't know what he in there doing. Close the door. <laughs> Playing with fire. Close yeah, the yeah, door yeah. lock it. Lock the door. <laughs> yeah. call, call somebody. You know, I know that's right. So, but yeah, that's why I said, you know, for you guys to be newlyweds and you're coming back from a war, yeah. you know what I'm saying? There's yeah. a lot that usually, you know, you have to deal with, whether you were on the field or you were not, if you were a medic, if you if you weren't, if you never saw a, another soldier or whatever, it's still a whole transition, you know? Yeah. So, right. Don't let anybody fool you. War, war is something else, I'll tell you. Yeah. Yeah, it there's is. so much going on right now, but that's, again, yeah. that's another episode. <laughs> yeah. So then I have some more questions. We'll just go on in. Okay. I have something. So, all right. So we talked about that. We had the challenging time of you striking matches. Um, but what when the road gets bumpy and then things are really challenging and you don't see eye to eye, what do you do then? Well, you know, that's why I said early in the relationship, you find out about your compatibility mm -hmm. and how you are able to work through 
certain things. Because you know, we are two different people, you know, a man and a woman. What's the old saying? Uh, men are from Mars and women are from Venus. Mm -hmm. and so that's how far we are apart sometimes. Mm -hmm. But in the beginning, you, you have the personality and, and the person that you know, and you kind of know their personality. Mm -hmm. And you know how they tick and what what uh, can make them feel bad or, or whatever. So in a relationship, you have to have that time to sit down and talk and try to work things out because we are two different people with two different attitudes about certain things. And if you can talk through it, and uh, just like in, in my fraternity say, you have to have like minds. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Enable to enable you to uh, work through tough situations sometimes. And I think we did that. That's good. What a, you agree? I agree. Oh, yeah, because she children, was tough on did, <laughs> <laughs> did children impact your relationship? Oh, yeah. Children, of course. You know, because you're, now you're devoting your time to an, a, a baby. A little, a whole new personality. You know nothing about a, a having a baby, mm -hmm. and it. You know you're trying to spend as much time as you can with your child. It's not that you're trying to do it; it's that you have to do it. Mm -hmm. And so then you have a, a spouse that you have to spend time with too, and take care of the things that they need. So mm -hmm. it can be challenging, but I mean that's something that you talked about before you even got married. Wow. You talked about having children and that was a sacrifice that you were willing to do to have. So yeah. Yeah. oh so I'm gonna ask a controversial question then. It's gonna be controversial. Uh -oh. Do you feel because I just saw this debate not too long ago, so I'm gonna ask. So what the woman said was the husband loved the wife more than the children. But the children loves the children. I mean, the wife loves the children more than the husband. So like yeah. saying that, and I'm not trying to like cause a fight or anything, but I was just, I thought it was interesting. She what, what, know, what do y'all love her? No, I'm just playing. <laughs> <laughs> what? Yeah. Do y'all <laughs> love her? That's what you really want to ask y'all. Who you love the most, Auntie person. Selma? Do you love your husband too. more or do you love <laughs> your daughter? No, I'm just It's <laughs> like, I've, I honestly thought it was probably husband and wife first and then children because technically you created the children together. I'm not married, so I don't know. The question is, in your mind, the mind of married people, right? Mm -hmm. Do the needs of the husband or the wife in the connection of the marriage come before the children? Did that make sense? Well, you know, when you have children, this is something that you decided to, to do. The children then ask to come. Mm -hmm. So those are your obligations to take care of your children. If your relationship, in my opinion, is strong enough, then you will be okay. You, you as a couple will be okay. Mm -hmm. you, you know, you do have to spend time with your, your spouse, mm -hmm. but the spouse understands that this little person that you brought into this world is our responsibility and that's what we have to take care of first. Yeah. How do you feel? Y'all lost me a long time ago. He's <laughs> putting the fifth on this one. He said, oh, no. Uh, no. Uh, children are a product of a marriage. If you are in sync with having children, then you know your responsibility. Yeah. It does not change your feelings for the for your wife, you just have another person that you can love just as much as you do your wife. That's good. I like that answer. Now, I told you, tell you. <laughs> I didn't have any way at all. I was just curious from those people that were saying it online. Go ahead, go ahead, all right. <laughs> so they love you, Talia, and your brothers. <laughs> Now, I want to ask, now, which kid did y'all love the most? No, I'm just playing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we get asked that often. <laughs> and, and don't forget, I'm going to ask your parents, too. Hey, hey. Now, you guys have been married, obviously, out of all the couples that we will be interviewing the most, the longest, right? So how is it and what, what have you guys done to keep your marriage alive and fun and successful? If you're in love... 
from the beginning, mm -hmm. you're in love after 50 years. Uh, I agree. I'm, I'm right. She's not concur. At this her. point, I, they got the no, same brain. So <laughs> at 53 years, they got that's one brain together. There is that's one brain. <laughs> that's one brain. <laughs> yeah, we, we he can start a conversation and I can finish it. See, I, I know what he's going to say, and he knows he knows what I'm going to say. <laughs> All right, the love is still there. So you don't feel like it has to. You have to get some romance. You don't feel like you have to work at it. No, no, it's natural. It, no. it just comes natural. I mean, when you love somebody, you don't have to work at anything. Mm. Yeah. yeah, I think that's a misconception that's been put out there <clears throat> too much. And uh, love in the beginning may change as you grow older, but it's still love. Mm. Yeah. And nothing changes that. Well, all right, mm. girl, you know I, I, I love you. <laughs> All right, so now we're going to give it, go to the part where we call it, give it a raise. So yes. how important is it for you guys to celebrate each other? You know, whether it's wins or losses or, you know, maybe somebody had a, a bad moment at work or something happened or you, you know, experience a loss or something like that. But how or if you got a promotion or you, you hit a big raise. I, you know, I worked, he, he has his, his own business. Mm -hmm. But I worked outside of, of the house and anything that I had a problem with, I would come home and talk to him about it. And he would he was always very encouraging mm -hmm. to me. You know, is whatever I did, he always backed me up. I never had a time where he, he said, Well, I don't think you should have done that, or I don't think, you know, he was always always had my back and he he has my back in everything that I do anything I I even got to a point where I had my own business where I was doing picture framing and he had he he uh I gave him a list of things that I wanted to do he got all of those things we called this guy the guy built the things that I needed I just thought that was so important for your husband to to support you like that yeah, to come up and do something like that, you know, because this was the second thing I'm doing. This I'm working and then doing this too. Mm -hmm. So that's good. Yeah, he he has always had my back. Yeah, because I knew I had to sleep at night. <laughs> 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 you better do that. <laughs> Not <true>. That's funny. <laughs> and I think that's also good that you um did get a point in your life where you were like, hey, you know, here is um work. Here's my family. And you were still able to identify something, you know, that you wanted to do, you know, right. yourself. And he was OK with that, because I've seen many a times just my friends um, who have been married where it was not received with, you know, uh, where somebody felt selfish. You know, it could have been uh, -uh you ain't about to make more money than me, you know, man or woman. It doesn't matter. So, <clears throat> excuse me, I definitely think, you know, I applaud. Uncle Mickey, for you supporting her in that dream, especially, you know, honestly, I know even back then, a lot of people would be like, nope, they definitely wouldn't even support a woman doing this and pursuing this and doing that from that perspective. So that's dope. I applaud that. Everybody give them the cheers. <laughs> We're going to finish up. Our last question is mm -hmm. part of give it a rave. So what do you think is the absolute best thing about being married? There's a lot of people now who are like, you know what? No, thanks. It's not for me. Um, that you have, that you know you have someone that has your back and that person, no matter what it is, you, you can always depend on that person. I mean, I could, I could be in Tung Kong, China, if I needed something that, he, if it was something I needed, mm -hmm. he would see to it. And I know that he would see to me getting whatever it is that I needed. I just always felt like he had my back. And that's very important. Right. And you? I agree. <laughs> no, <laughs> you need to expand. <laughs> speak to the fellas out here, Uncle Mickey. We need to speak to these these men. Yes. Yes. Speak to the men. What is that? Speak to the fellas. Speak to the men. Well, I, I forgot. What's the question? <laughs> Give marriage a rave for you. What is the best thing about being married? Say, say these. Tell these men who of the newer generation 
listen, don't pass on marriage. Marriage is great. This yeah. is why. Uh, the best thing about being married is being with the woman that you love, number one. And uh, I will tell the fellas out there today, uh, you need to find that person that you that you want to be with and allow yourself to learn that person, to learn how that person uh, moves, her feelings, mm -hmm. her compatibility with you, number one. Is, is, is most important. The chemistry is going to be there because that's a natural thing. Mm -hmm. But learn that you two want to be, or get, to be together, to be with each other, and when you're apart, you're missing her. Yeah. That's most important. Mm -hmm. and, and after you do that, uh, the love will last. That's good. All right. Yeah. You heard it here, folks. No. <laughs> <laughs> 53 years. So what is your actual anniversary? Tell us when you guys get married. When's your anniversary? December 23rd, 1970. That's dope. <laughs> That's dope. That's dope. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Lord. Yeah. <laughs> well, <laughs> we thank you guys so much. I learned a lot. Y'all have known them my whole life. Some of this story I didn't even know. So See? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> every podcast tell you am i right we learn something new every single Pod yes. podcast a hundred percent so thank you guys so much for coming on here and you know teaching some of these i won't call them youngsters you know males females and anything else this is what a dope marriage looks like here at 53 years old and y'all can see the vibe look they like Siamese twins sitting on the, on the left they, they even got matching shirts <laughs> <laughs> one didn't even tell the other one <laughs> yeah I remember what I said you like mine yeah <laughs> literally so I applaud you guys and I pray for many many more successful awesome blessed years and I absolutely love it and if you guys watch the other podcast uh, the other episodes, I'm sorry. When we talked about the fun and New Year's parties and stuff, this is where we used to have it, you guys. Yes. <laughs> was at their house. Oh, yeah, right. The fact that they, their that. marriage oh, survived yeah. these New Year's and Christmas parties, I am. Yeah, it was a good time. Yeah, we had a good time. <laughs> yeah. So, that's, that's but, when you, that's, yeah, that's when you grow up around people you enjoy being with. Right. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> All right. Thank you so much for having us. No problem. And thank you, Talia, for inviting your beautiful and handsome parents on here. So yes. anything else you want to say, Talia? Thank you so much for participating. Just thanks for sharing your love and your advice. And I think it will be valuable for people to hear. Mm -hmm. Thank you. All right. Thank you, guys. All right. So stay tuned, All you right. guys. We are about to roll in to the next lovely couple. So stay tuned. Don't go anywhere. Thank you again. Auntie Selma, Uncle Mickey. I appreciate you guys. Love you All guys. Right. All right. Oh, well, bye. Oh, I'm sorry. Bye. No. All right. All right. Bye. All right. What's up, you guys? All right. We are back on couple number two out of the six. And again, this is our Valentine's Day special. Uh, you guys can normally catch us every other Thursday, but this one we had to bring it in on February the 14th. So this couple is Anthony and Maxine. Welcome to 50 Shades of Life. Hello, hello. <laughs> and as you guys have seen, every couple has a different story, a different dynamic. Um, and yet again, this one has a different story and a different dynamic. So first of all, tell us, how did you guys met? And also, how long have you been married? Ooh. So we met in high school. Um, he was a cast tech. I was a Cody tech or Cody Common. I'm sorry, Cody Common. It's weird, weird situation. But we were in the same um, after school program. Oh, wow. And he couldn't leave me alone. So. Okay. So we were. We were in the same program. You swear I couldn't leave you alone, though. No. You was fixing my computer errors. No. Oh, God. <laughs> no? You have no errors? No. Because no. that's when we had the floppy disk computer drive. She didn't know what she was doing. And he was trying to, he was So she fixing made sure it. she sat next to me every time. Oh! <laughs> no, you sat next to me. 
<laughs> and you so, also waited for me every waited with me every night for my granny to pick me up. Aww. That's good. That's good. That's good. So how long have you guys been married? Tell the crowd. Do y'all remember? Do y'all know? <laughs> <laughs> 24 and a half. Be 25 in July. Wow. Okay, nice. Hey, wait, how old are you playing? So did you guys get married? How soon after you guys graduated? Like when did you guys get married? Because I can't, I'm not doing the math right now at this point in my life. Two years after graduating high school. <laughs> two two years after graduating high school? Yeah. Okay. I guess I gotta do all the math. Yes, you'd have to do all the math. Yeah, See, I told you he did fix all the computer problems. Hey, me and you together, we got this. <laughs> <laughs> IT or the that y'all deal with numbers every day. So you got this. I don't need to use that part of my brain. Nope. <laughs> all, right. Right. all right, Talia, go ahead. Cause I know Talia always has all the good questions. So go ahead. Oh, what? Me? Yeah, okay. So what we're trying to do here is kind of talk to people who are thinking, I feel like right now when we look out on online, we see women and men battling it out and it's not about being together anymore. It's more like, well, you should be doing this and what are you doing for this? And it's not really about promoting love. And so what we're trying to do here with this episode is promote marriage and love and relationships. So what we're trying to do is get, you know, each couple to kind of tell us about their journey and if it can help if it can help people you know talk about love and tell us about love and talk about marriage so that's what we're trying to do here <laughs> all right so i'm curious to know so uh, this is interesting too uh, my parents um they were married well, they've been knowing each other since high school do you feel like so you you guys may have a similar dynamic how have things changed and how have you grown? Like, do you look back and say, wow, I am nowhere near the person I used to be? I'm definitely different. I, I am not the same. I'm not. Um, I think when you look at how we parent and mm -hmm. then we look at how we are, it's just like, I would not have done this way back when. And now I'm like, you know what? It's going to be what it's going to be. It is what it is. And I'm just going to keep it moving. Whereas mm -hmm. back today, I'm like, um, this is not what we're doing. Yeah. It's just, mm, it's definitely, it's, just, it's definitely I'll, different. I'll tell everybody because see, this is I have to remember. Not everybody knows you guys. <laughs> <laughs> Let me backtrack. Okay, these are yeah. close friends of ours. I was introduced to them when I first started dating Bartell, actually, <laughs> back in mm -hmm. '06. Yes. Um, so they have known him just as long, I think, as they've been married. So, <laughs> um. But I know that what your dynamic is. So can you tell us a little bit like how many kids that you you have um, in that setup? Because that's one thing that has been different is we have had some couples that had no kids and they came in and had kids. We've had some that came in the game with kids. We had some that came in the game and never had kids. <laughs> so we have had a different variety and that's kind of helped us kind of um, shed light on different ways of people handling different stuff. So oh, yeah, four kids. Okay, all right. Oh, okay. So you have four kids, been married twenty four years. And so I didn't hear from you. Do you look back and say, when you look back on, you know, from where you were when you first got married, did you say, I'm just, I'm just so, I'm so different. Do you parent differently? Do you look back at yourself and say, I'm a different husband? Do you think back on any of those things? So, so husband, I know I've grown a lot. Um, a lot of changes. Mm -hmm. Um, as far as parenting, I think I take less crap now. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Along with my wife. <laughs> wow. 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 <laughs> Lack of patience is that what that is? No, no. I still have patience. I got you. Take advantage of it. Yeah. 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 <laughs> But it's also, you know, keeping it real, right? Because I think um, one thing that we've talked about offline, right, is that a lot of people think that a marriage is like this golden ticket into this different life, you know? Um, it, no it's, man. oh, you have no battles, you have no hills and mountains and all that. 
So this is definitely an episode to keep it real. Hence the reason. So, and that's kind of what we wanted to kind of dive into is the different situations and stuff like that. But um, so kind of going back to you guys saying that you met in high school. I mean, we are like grown, grown now, right? (laughs) At this point, (laughs) what you call it? What you call it? What's the call that you call it? I thought you said him. Oh, I know. I said this big grown age, big grown age. Yeah, this big grown age. Yeah. (laughs) This big grown age. So kind of going back to when you guys first met, what was it, Anthony, that was something that made, you know, Maxine stick out to where you were like, you know what? I kind of like this girl a lot more than uh, just a girlfriend. I want to take it to the next level. I don't know. (laughs) Got me thinking. If you don't fix your face right now. (laughs) Oh, (laughs) This feels like my interview with my husband. <laughs> oh, okay, okay. Well, let's maybe Maxine can help us out. What What were you thinking when you were you like? Okay, I I feel like we could do this. We could settle down, even if we're young. You know. Oh, see, I thought you was talking about when we first met. Well, so you were more clear than Raquel. <laughs> <laughs> no, she's being nice. So Maxine, you heard what I said. He, he I heard what you said. Okay, I was clear. What I said was. <laughs> <laughs> don't do that. Don't don't do me like that. Don't even do me like that. No. <clears throat> I just wanted to know what made her stand out above the rest that made you feel like you wanted to even propose to her. Like you could see, I want to spend the rest of my life with this one right here. So might have to get deep on you for a minute. Okay. Um, so I felt like she wasn't about games, like she was serious. Mm-hmm. Um, and plus when we, so we met freshman year of high school, we got back together, I think it was senior year, mm-hmm. early part of senior year at a party I didn't even want to go to. That I was throwing. So going back even further, it was like a couple months before high school started Mm -hmm. I buried my mom. She died from breast cancer. So the feelings that I had for her were, I was, I was just a different person and a different male, I'll say at that in high school, I wasn't being a player and all that. Yeah. And, you know, we just had, we were both about, I ain't out here trying to play games. Um, We're going to do this. We're going to do this. We even talked about it before I even asked her. Um, but being, we were just, we were both serious. We both only wanted to do this once. Um, I guess that pretty much covers. I mean, it was just, it was the feeling of love and family that I think drove us and has kept us. That's dope. Don't be over here crying. I'm not crying. <laughs> Maxine, same thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, let me take in my words. I'm gonna need you to put some words in here. But I think you know, <laughs> when we were, I don't know. It's it's a several several moments. So if he's using that part, I'm gonna jump to our college years. Okay. So my freshman year of college, oh boy. I just went against everybody and got a job. I didn't need one because I had a full ride, but I wanted to work. Mm-hmm. So while I was working, I burned both my hands. So couldn't do a single thing living in a dorm. Yes. So I know crazy situation. So for almost a week, I snuck on his side, slept in his bed. Yeah, mm-hmm. it was a real interesting situation. I had to um, be cleaned by him. And I knew then, keep in mind, we weren't married yet. Oh. So my family couldn't come up and I did, couldn't leave my classes. So yeah, he took care of me for that entire week. And I was like, yep. And my grandma was like, yep, this, this is for you. This is the one for you. Wow. Yeah. That, okay. I just want to know how you burn your hands. So. <laughs> <laughs> Get you to look now. I'm just curious. You know how in, a, in the um, cafeterias, right? You mm-hmm. have those long, long, long pants and trays. Mm-hmm. I was paying attention that they were using multiple pairs of gloves and I only had on those, um, the plastic gloves you get at uh, going to the doctor's office and they use, yeah, I only had on those to move the pants and yeah, it was a real bad situation. Oh, oh no. Ah, uh, 
Dang. How long did it take to heal from that? I don't really remember the, mm -hmm. the entire time. I just know that I had them wrapped up really good for at least a week, maybe even two. Mm. Oh my God. Wow. That's Dang. So, wow. Yeah. I mean, that does speak volumes, Anthony. So, yeah. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> I out of the door I'm sneaking in yeah it was it was yeah yeah because I know grown men that you'd be just SOL in the corner like hell <laughs> <laughs> you stupid <laughs> Not yeah. hell. you help me get on the toilet you know something <laughs> so, oh my gosh. for you to do that at what 19 20 ish around that age 19 that's dope I yeah that is Bartel would be S. No, I'm just playing. I'm just playing. I, I, I believe you can't. Or I can't. I think he'll be like, you know what? I need you to figure it out. Seth, Seth. You, sure, use your wrist. No, I'm just playing. Use your <laughs> wrist. Oh, no. <laughs> Not your wrist. <laughs> but, uh, but, okay, so that was good. Obviously, you guys had, you know, a dope connection. So was college mm -hmm. rough? I mean, because you guys started so young. You know, yeah. being in a relationship and all that kind of stuff. And I know you said you broke up and you got back together, whatever. Um, was that the moment you where you guys didn't like, break up? <laughs> you said you did. I thought you said y'all broke, y'all got back together your senior year. Right. So I moved around a lot in high school. That's why we just we lost contact. Lost contact. Oh, okay. Broken oh. up. Okay. Okay. They were yeah. like, "Hold on, get it right. We we in this thing." Like. <laughs> 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 so, I mean, because that's really young, um, and we kind of heard from the the like, oops, like she said, her parents that you know, he talked about how it was kind of rough, and that was during the what fifties and sixties, and you know what I'm saying. It's a whole different dynamic than it is when we were in the nineties. You know what I'm saying in high school and then going into college. Um, was it that point in time where you guys did say, okay, we for real serious, like? Nobody else, nothing else. This is it. Is that okay? Mm -hmm. yeah. All right, that's dope. So y'all went through college together. Um, he was your CNA. <laughs> Facts. <laughs> Facts. So, so yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Okay. So on what I want to kind of know here is too. I don't know. Is it going to be that different though? Because so, you already had like a big moment where you had to depend on each other already, where you had to, you know, say. Hey, can you care for me? And that person has already mm -hmm. shown you, you know, yeah, you can care for me. Was there any big adjustments though when you actually said I do and you were like, woo, we married now? Oh, this is different than what I expected. Was there any moments like that? Mm hmm. <laughs> Would you care to share? <laughs> yes, please share. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I don't know. I like to spend money. And that was like one of the biggest things that I had to learn how to not do when we um, enter a togetherness, so to speak, because we mm -hmm. used to share the household and all that. He had his account. I had mine. And it was just like, um, I'm out of money. Can I have some? And it was like, um, we got to pay rent and we got to do this. Like, But what that got to do with me, I won't to go shopping. So I had to learn <laughs> how to balance all of that when I couldn't do what I want to do when I was just when we weren't in the same space. Yeah, if that makes right. sense. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, just learning how to be a couple mm -hmm. with the mm -hmm. same last name versus um, we not married yet. I can do what I want to do type of uh, mentality. Yeah. 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 N D E P E. Oh my bad. My bad. <laughs> <laughs> so and we definitely heard that from each couple. So what was it, Anthony? Where did you have to have like constant conversations with her? Like, look, you can't, you can't do this. And then, <laughs> well, it's not that bad. She's like, it's only once a month now. Dang. <laughs> <laughs> but um, is it obviously you guys probably that was a big thing or whatever, because, you know, you admitted it yourself. So was it constant conversations? How did you guys deal with it? Was it OK, we need to get a joint or Anthony, you handling all the finances? How is it so that because I know a lot of couples like that, that could be detrimental. 41% of divorced Gen Xers, along with 29% of divorced boomers, stated their marriages ended due to financial disagreements. So how is it that you've made it 20 some years? So obviously something has worked. Is that to me? Yes. 
I just wanted to be sure. Okay. <laughs> so, yeah, I, I take care of the household finances. Gotcha. That's probably okay. the best way to put it. Okay. All right. And that's, yeah. <laughs> You're like, hey, look, I like just said, got him. That's still it. working on some stuff, but yeah, I take care of the majority of stuff and the most important stuff, making sure we still have a roof over our heads wow, and food and I'm all that. that I did not say you that bad, but it's stuff that I do that you just don't know about. Okay. <laughs> yeah. She said it's not her problem. <laughs> <laughs> Maxine, this is actually an uh, intervention. This is not actually about loving. <laughs> <laughs> this is an intervention. <laughs> um, so, it's not that bad. It's not that bad. Target. And you don't go with her to, you know. Oh, my God. He started holding my hand when we go through stores now. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I like you so much. <laughs> I heard that. Oh, my gosh. I love it. Well, what other ways have you guys dealt with, like, disagreements? I know you mentioned parenting. Um, and you obviously, you know, you have four kids and stuff. So, um, tell us a little bit about how you guys have dealt with the parenting, you know, once you guys got married and kicking in, kicking out kids and stuff like that. We still got two at home. It's going to be a minute before they get out, though. I think he's harder on the girls than he is on the boys. Really? Yes, really. Mm. I think so. Whereas I'm much more of a coddler of all of them. Mm. Yes. So if I can keep them Big all time. at home, I would prefer to keep them all at home. He's like, no, it's time to go. It's um, I've done enough. Yeah. I'm like, no, I want to get my baby's home. So yeah, we are a little bit different in that part. So you're okay, more, a lot different. Anthony, are you more like I need y'all to learn these skills so you can be independent and be on your own? Is that is yes. that <laughs> And so you're more of like the mothering, naturing, keep them close you. for you. Oh, okay. So since you're polar opposites, that's that's polar opposites. Mm -hmm. How do you deal with it without the kids being like, well, I'm going to mama then because I know what she, like, how do you deal with it? We still a front on it. We just have to come to a decision together. We do. You don't think so? These <laughs> Like, again? Are you not front? Yes. Oh, yes. So, okay. You just said a front. I'm like, a front? What's a front? <laughs> That's not the united part. <laughs> I'm missing all my words. She said, you know, nobody I taught English. I just, I don't. I'm not in the education world. I'm not. <laughs> oh, so then that makes a good point because this is our question that we've asked each and every couple that's come up, which I think I already know your answer then. Um, because, or it might be a little bit different because you were saying you're the nurturer. So in the relationship, do you feel like it's important in your marriage? Do you feel like it's important to be the united front? Or do you find sometimes that the children may kind of squeeze in and take um, some of the attention away from the partner, from the, the husband or the wife? And you feel like sometimes the children have, are more demanding and they need more time and more energy than the spouse? I'll have to say, yeah. Definitely um, the baby girl has needed a lot more of our attention and a lot more of the nurturing than the older three. So she, mm. yeah, that's, that's taken a lot, I would say, mm. in these past few years. So yeah, definitely. She's like, I'm about to leave my, my mark. <laughs> well, the mark is left. She left the mark. The mark is, left. <laughs> is this the baby? Because I'm the baby, yeah. so I'm sure mine would yeah. say that. I'm the yes. baby. We leave our marks. <laughs> yes, that's my deal. Plural, yes. <laughs> but, so we're like that too. I get it. Hey, look, we got to. Why not? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Um, so Talia had mentioned this before, whatever, and kind of going into that. So do you think that, um, your spouse should come first or should your children and that love come first? And that's for both of you guys to answer that. Ooh, that's, that's tough. That's tough. That's okay. I can answer that one first. Mm -hmm. Um, 
given like recent, I would have to say making sure that he's okay first. As long as there's not a life or death situation happening, I do make sure my husband's okay first. We have a conversation and then I go to the chat. Mm, okay. When it's not a life or death situation. Got it. Yeah. So the answer is the same. <clears throat> She has been first and then kids. Got it. My thing is if we're not good, then everything else is not good. Got it. That's true. You, I, you I, I seriously thought she was going to say the kids first. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I think there's moments where, you know, as a mother, you know, um, that's like a battle. You know what I'm saying? I mean, you are a uh, Mother and a father, 365. Whoa, 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 whoa. You know, what you mean? He's like, hold on, I'm the father, what? <laughs> <laughs> father, 365. I said that, what you mean? No, it sounds like you said she's the mother and father. Uh, that's like it. No, I'm like, what you mean? No, y'all need to go to sleep. No, I'm just right. <laughs> <laughs> No, no, I was saying, you know. Parents. You, yeah, you're the mother yeah. and father 365 right um but i know in a lot of households mothers do usually in the first year right of the child's life usually you just naturally take on a little bit more maybe the first two years in natural and most traditional situations right um because i think only recently have we seen more and more males like no i'm stepping up they're demanding health care they're demanding time off they're demanding you know where they realize that as well so but um, so that that definitely can be a battle. That was a question to definitely make you think. So, yeah. So we're going to pivot a little bit and want to talk about um, the fun stuff. So let's talk about how important do you feel like it, it, it is to keep the romance and the, and the spice in your relationship? Very important. <laughs> she was like, no, he finished the question. <laughs> yeah. That's part of the marriage. You got to keep that going. Yes. So do you guys do like date nights or uh, what does that look like? And does is has it changed because you've been married for so long? So what you did, you know, 15 years ago, is it different than what you do now? Yes. Yeah. Like now we don't even really necessarily have to go out. We can stay in and chill. So what y'all do on your chill nights? Y'all have movie night? Y'all y'all turn <laughs> up the music and dance? What do you do? Movies, talk mess. Yeah. Say talk mess. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> they say get up and not sit quiet through a movie now. Oh, oh, you want to know? Back I didn't know that. Or pooping on them in space. Okay. Um, yeah, wine tasting at home is actually pretty fun. That's I'm trying. Okay. You taste <laughs> half of what I. That's why I get, you do taste it. You try it a little bit. Um. <laughs> I'm trying to do the whiskey tasting at home, but that's mm -hmm. a little difficult because we're not big whiskey people, but mm -hmm. definitely um, do wine tasting at home when we go out. I mean, if we don't go out. Gotcha. Uh, Anthony, why are you looking at her like that again? You in these faces. I thought I was bad. You got it. She's the wine person. I'm in the whiskey. Oh, okay. Okay. So she over here drinking wine. You over here trying to do whiskey. I don't try. I do. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> I ain't got no time to try. I, I'm in this. I'm true to this. <laughs> I feel you. So I guess the next question would be, is there, have, do you feel like the love that you guys have for each other is still continuing to grow? Do you feel like you have to sometimes work at it? Do you feel like, you know, because people be like, oh my God, 20, 25 years. Ah, you know, at that point, you're just there. So, I mean, and that's what we're trying to break is um, the negativity of marriage. You know what I'm saying? In this in this episode, because uh, a lot of people are married, but they're roommates. You know what I'm saying? And that's not a marriage. Um, so at 20 years, do you feel like like what did you guys do to keep your love going outside of like, you know, date nights and stuff like that? Like, what is it and what is it about each other? that you love. We didn't even get into that, Tally. Like, what is it about Anthony that you like? And what is it about Maxine that you like, you know? I think it's more of, because I've been in education for um, a long time. And mm -hmm. 
transitioned from different various positions. And in that, sometimes I come home on two million and it's just the way he grabs me and, and just like, I five need you to million. breathe. Okay, five million, but I'm not myself. And yeah, he's like, I just need you to breathe. It's just his calming nature that he has when I come in. And then it's like, oh, okay, breathe. And I can do like work all over again tomorrow. And it's just like something he's grown into because he wasn't like this at the very beginning. And so it's like him doing that. It's like, oh, that's so sweet. And I'm just looking into his eyes. And it's like, oh, your eyes are so cute. It's just, <laughs> it's just calm. It calms me down and I'm good. That's dope. That's dope. What about you, Ann? So she probably has the biggest heart of anyone that I know. And it's both a good and bad thing. Because sometimes people that don't deserve that hurt get it. Yeah. And try to take advantage of her. Then I got to step in and crack somebody's head or something. I heard that. <laughs> I condone, condone violence unless it's. <laughs> <laughs> unless I condone violence on my side. <laughs> it's not physical. I said I unless just, it's necessary. I just have to take the daddy tone with him and they chill out. <laughs> <clears throat> That's dope. because you mentioned that you have daughters and and sons so this is important too so what would you tell them when they are looking for a partner what would you recommend about marriage from what you know from your experiences what would you say well don't do it <laughs> <laughs> we about to get Oprah. Let me fix my pillow. <laughs> I think it's because we teach our children to love who you love. It's, um, it's ultimately your choice. You have to be able to um, be with that person every day and remind them like what your father and I share doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to have that same experience. So although we, I, at least when I pray, I pray for, you know, their spouse to be or the current spouse or partner that they have at the present moment. And hoping that's the same, the right person for them. And if it's not, then you have to be re able to recognize that. And if you're willing to put in the work and continue to fight for that person, I mean, we have to respect your wishes. But at the same time, if I don't feel like that person is right for you, I'm just going to flat out tell you, you shouldn't have did what you did. And now you got a major bear heart. Now you got a lie in it. And yes. I may or may not have already said that, but we'll see what happens. And they do tell you have uh, some grown kids at this yeah. point. So I think well, well. they have some some dope kids too. So I'm gonna throw that out there as well. Because <laughs> yeah. I'm like, I'm about to send my kids over to their house. Cause... No, no. We're not no, taking uh, any, we're not they, taking they, any they in. Like, putting them out. What you saying? My kids, Roman and them and not bad. Roman okay. is awesome. But he, no. he come hang out. <laughs> we can play the game. We can do all the things, but he don't have to go back home. <laughs> Facts. <laughs> but honestly, what would and, and I say that being serious, I mean, they've got like dope athletes. They got, I mean, like they're just dope kids. And I applaud you guys for that. And I say it all the time. Like, y'all did a dope job. So, and you know, nothing is perfect, you know. But um, talking about parenting and stuff like that has been like a big part of every conversation that we have had with the parents. Um, and clearly you guys, to me, have done a, an outstanding job, but what was it that you guys did together to make such dope kids? Honestly, like they're, they're successful. They're, you know, doing what they got to do and stuff like that. What did you do? I guess my whole thing is I want to see you be better than me. So I'm going to give you all that I can for you to succeed. Now, whether you listen or do it, that's on you, but can't say I didn't tell you. Yeah. Yeah. Or teach you or have the conversation. Like <clears throat> we don't I don't sugarcoat. I coddle, but I don't sugarcoat. And that's the one thing they will tell you. I'm just straight up real and as real as with them as I can be. Um mm -hmm. and if they like it, they like it. They don't, they don't. But that's definitely the one thing they will tell anybody that we don't we tell them what they need to know and we tell them what they don't need to know, just so you could are capable to make that decision and live with the choices. That's real. Yeah. That's, I think that's one thing that we both do with them. You, we don't get sugarcoating or nothing. We don't get it straight. Yeah. 
I, I respect that 100%. <laughs> okay. So this is our last part of our segment. And this mm -hmm. is the part where you celebrate marriage and talk about, well, I know y'all laughed and joked, say, hey, don't do it. But if you wanted to say, what are the things that you love about being married? What would it be? We have so many great moments together. I think it's just waking up in his arms and like, oh, good morning, babe. Like that's like, oh. that's my favorite. Like I can't get out of bed without like feeling his arms and just like, I just, I can't. I need that oh. every just that night, that natural connection. That's dope. Yeah. That's just our last part. <laughs> it was just saying, what did you feel like is your best and favorite thing? About being married, right? Yes. Talk to the dudes out there. Like, this is who we need you to speak to. Talk to the dudes about what's the joy of being married. Yes. Well, well there are a few joys. I'm going to keep it PG. <laughs> oh, this is a, <laughs> this is 50 Shades of Life, baby. We keep it real. <laughs> <laughs> Ours is tagged 18 and older. So just <laughs> oh, you almost made me spit this good tea out. <laughs> <laughs> <Good tea. laughs> <clears throat> no, just having that life partner, you know, through good and bad. Just like we sitting here laughing about stuff now. Yeah. It's, it's nice. Yeah. That's it. That's it. it. <laughs> Short. Anthony, I made a few words. <laughs> yes, I am. Yes, I am. <laughs> Always have been. <sighs> I say a lot with a few words. His <laughs> I got it. Everything like got me beat. So <laughs> I, feel you. I feel you. Well, we definitely appreciate you guys coming on here with your knowledge, with your your wisdom, um, your honesty. You know what I'm saying? We really appreciate it. Like she said, it's so much, and it has been so much tension that we see in the black community alone, right? Where it's so much um female versus male, black female versus black female, even black male versus black male, black female versus black female. And it's been so much, um, I don't need to get married. I don't, you know, we're not saying you need to get married or anything like that, but hey, these are the joys of marriage. Right, this right. is the realness of marriage, right? Uh, we've heard couples talk about you guys, um, you know, those that have been married 53 years, one of the the oldest, longest married couples was 53 years. And they talk uh, about, you know, when you get older, like having somebody there as a companion and, and through thick and thin, when you're sick, when you don't feel good, when you're happy, um, you know, you have the joy <clears throat> of somebody there has, is pretty dope. So, and you're witnessing it 24 and a half years into this. <laughs> <laughs> uh, some dopeness going in and the fact that she is always and has been around kids in her professional life and still has some dope kids and it's just I just uh, you know I thank you guys so I look up to you guys as friends on some realness um, I enjoy kicking it with you guys as always so but thank you for the support for coming on here tonight tell you anything else you want to add Yes. And just thank you so much for opening up. And I don't, you know, you never met me before. I'm asking you these deep personal questions. So I appreciate that. <laughs> You're welcome. You're welcome. Yes. Okay. All right, you guys. So please do not go anywhere. All right. Stay tuned to 50 Shades of Life. Dishes. Fresher than them dishes. Tell your grant your wishes. I'm a tarot reading witch.